Okay, so as we get started with analysis assignment one, I just wanna take some time to go through the spreadsheet. Um, this looks like a lot of work to do, but in the end, it's really not as bad as it looks. So if you click on your spreadsheet, it should open. I already have it opened here. And this gives you a lot of information. It's nice to have a key for your data set. It's not always necessary, but it is nice to have it, especially if you're going to use it later or you're sharing your data set with a lot of people. That way there's no question about what each variable is named and what that variable means. Um, in this case, it has different codes for each, each numerical value. So that, that's helpful as well. All right, so let's click over to customer data. Now, the first thing that I noticed with this spreadsheet, and I understand that many people in class will have a range of experience with Excel. Um, so you may already know this, but for me, it's helpful if I can start my spreadsheets with the actual row, which would have the name, and then the data set. So there's a lot of extra information up here that we don't need. Now we can fix that a couple of ways. You can either copy this, over to a new spreadsheet, and then you can get rid of some of these. So for, for our purposes, we probably don't actually even need that. Um, we could clean it up this way. Now you notice we still have two rows because of how this is named. So you'd have to actually go in and name it um, this way. And this is all fine and good. And then you could remove this. Now, the other way that you can do it, and what that does for you is it, it gives you all of your information in one place. I'm going to make these columns a little bit wider. You can do that by clicking on the, the line right there. See how you notice the cursor changes um, if you click on the line. That will work. That allows you to go up to data. You can hit filter. It automatically puts your filter where it needs to be, and it knows how much information is available in each column. The other option that you have is if you want to use a freezing panel. So you can go to view, freeze panes, and then just hit freeze panes. What that does is it lets all of this information stay the same but we can just scroll through and then see our data. Um, now that does not fix the issue. If I go in and hit filter, it's, um, it's not filtering it specifically where I want it to filter, um, but it's, it's working. So it just depends on your data set. Sometimes this will work, sometimes this will not work. So as you go through the course and you use Microsoft Excel later, just know you may have to troubleshoot some of that. A very clean spreadsheet like this takes a little bit of time up front to get it where you need it to be, but then it usually um, prevents you from having issues later. So just a couple of options there. All right, so now as far as what we want to um, discover in the course, we need measures of central tendency. So mean, median, mode, we might want the range with having a minimum and maximum. Um, and I also want to show you how to do bins so we can categorize the, the different maybe ages or incomes or credit scores that make sense for your data. So let's get started. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is going to be go down to the bottom of your spreadsheet and pop in maybe mean, median, mode, min, and max. These are the things we want to measure. Um, we have your gender up here, and this will let you um, figure out, let's go back over here, what our minimums and maximums are and so forth. So if you hit this function bar, you should have this bar up here. It's a function bar. Um, you notice you have toolbars, home, data. These are the two that you'll mostly use. Later, we'll add in a data analysis tool pack. But for now, this should work with the basics that Excel has to offer. So if you go to function and we hit mean, now mean is basically average. It doesn't say that in Excel, but that's what it is. And then what we wanna do is highlight our data and 
say okay. So what it's doing, it's giving you the whole column of data, B7 to B195 and hit okay. Now you'll see the um, function is written up here, equals average B7 to B195. So if you wanted to type that in, you could, or you can use this function um, option in Excel. So if I wanted to do that here, I could do equals average parentheses. Now we're in column C um, and I think it's C7 to C195. So you can type that in if you want to. So here again, you have average B7 to B195. If I scoot over, we have average C7 to C195. You can also just drag this across and it will fill it in for you. So when you drag it, click that small cross right next to the, uh, the box and that will drag whatever function you have in there across. Now we wanna do median. So same thing, I'll come up to the function bar, hit median. Median says median. The only one that doesn't really say what it, what it is is mean uh, because mean is the same as average. So the other should be pretty intuitive. Same thing here, we're going to put in our numbers of our uh, range of cells. So B7 to B195, you can highlight it, you can type it, whatever you wanna do. B7 to B195, hit okay. And now you see the median. So again, looking up here at your function bar, you have equals median, parentheses, B7 to B195, and in parentheses. And then to drag that, Come down and find the cross and drag it over. Now let's do mode. Same thing here. And now if I wanted to come in here and type B7 to B195, that's fine. Or you can go up and highlight it and then drag it across. Now we wanna look at min. So this gives you your range. What's the minimum number that we have in the range? And again, B7 to B195. And we'll drag that across. And then what's the maximum? So come up to function, type in max. B7 to B195. All right, there you go. Now you can change these to have a certain number of uh, decimal places. If you go to the home toolbar, you have your decimal places up here and then you can um, fix it the way you want it. Typically one or two places after the decimal makes sense, it just depends on your data. So maybe for gender, we don't really need that. We wanna just have ones or twos. Um, for age, that might make sense to have that, or you can you can take the decimal places out. But for income, we probably want to have that formatted um, like we would expect income to be formatted with two decimal places. And then for credit score, um, we don't really need to have the decimal places, so you can take those off. There you go. Now you have information that is usable for your managerial report. Um, and you can make sense of the, the mean, median mode, min and max for all of these different variables. The next thing that I wanna show you is the bins. So I'm going to add one more worksheet. Okay, to add a worksheet, hit the plus sign here. And then let's do a bin for your age. And what this means is you're going to categorize it. So if we were going to do a, a bar chart, let's say, for age, let's come in here. We're going to hit recommended charts. There we go. You can go to insert, recommended charts. And then you notice the ages are all over the place. So we need to make this, um, put the ages into categories so that it makes sense. All right, so to do that, we wanna copy your ages. So you can right click and copy. You can hit Control C. Um, there's a lot of options there. And then 
I want to paste. So control V will let you paste it. Next, I wanna decide what my limits should be here. So what I mean by bin limits is, do we wanna put these in groups of ages of five-year spans or 10-year spans? It's completely up to you how you do that. Um, for this purpose, I went ahead and decided, I'll just do 10-year spans. So my um, labels, I want them to look like this. I have this already typed on the other side. So anybody below 10 years of age, which we don't have that, um, if we come back to data and hit filter, you can see that the youngest person we have is 19. But just for the sake of order, anybody under 10, anybody between 11 and 20, and so on. Now, to make the bin function work, we also need to have a column that says our limit. So these are the higher limits. Notice we have somebody up to age 10, up to age 20, up to age 30, and so on. So this will be the column that we use in our function. And then what we want to do is put in our function. So I'm going to go ahead and title this column. This is our bin count or how many people are in this grouping of um, under age 10. And then we want to put in our frequency. So to do that, we're going to go up to frequency. You can type it. If you use it enough, it should pop up right there automatically. All right. And then your data array is going to be all of your actual data. So starting with A2 and go down. And then your bin array will be, let's come back to the top, your actual bin limits. And then you hit OK. Now it automatically fills it in there for you. So you can see that you have seven people over the age of 70. You have 34 people in that age range of 61 to 70 and so on. So now this makes a lot more sense if we go to insert recommended charts. We can see how many people are in each group. And then you'd want to rename these so that they make, make more sense. Um, so what we could do is play with it a little bit here. There you go. Um, if you highlight both columns, you can see it there. You could put it in a pie chart. It's almost too much information to put in a pie chart, um, but you could play with it that way if you want your line charts or bar charts to, to go horizontal or vertical. That's completely up to you. All right, so that should help with assignment number one.